Hey guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs and thank you so much for watching this video. Today I've got an After Effects tutorial and we're going to be creating a nice logo reveal intro. It's not that uh, advanced so for those people who have kind of got the expertise uh, within After Effects, this may not be the one for you. Uh, I wasn't actually intending on making this tutorial, uh, I had an animation lined up that I was going to release. However, there's been a few problems, those of you who follow me on Twitter would know all about that. Um, all the problems I'm currently going through, so I thought, why not? I need to make a tutorial. It's been a while. Um, it's been about two weeks now since I actually uploaded, and I don't like that any more than you guys like that. So here is a video, uh, something quickly nice and makeshift. Uh, but without further ado, we'll actually have a look at what we're going to be creating uh, using QuickTime. So just take a look at this. And that is pretty much it in all its mighty glory. Uh, the things that we're going to be focusing on is we're going to be focused on the reveal initially, uh, the the reflection or the blur or shadow as you might want to call it on the bottom, and also the kind of fold down text as you see uh, here. And that is everything in a nutshell. I'll also give a brief on how to create this logo here. I actually made this in Photoshop, so I'll go ahead and quickly give you uh, a way on how I did this. There's a layer. There's uh, H Rome Designs. <laughs> Uh, on, on a text layer, uh, a lips or a circle, as you might know, the color pink, and I just got a letter C and with the color white, overlaid it or made it on top of the C. Uh, so you can see I just move it about. So I had it there or so, and all I've done was merge the circle and the C together by right clicking and merge layers. And then, literally, all I went to was the magic wand tool on that layer. I clicked the white, which of that course would have been the C, and pressed the backspace, which deletes that. You know, control D which deselects it and once I hide the background there you will notice that it disappears so that's how I pretty much made this logo uh, here so once you've got that logo to go we're gonna get started so I'm gonna make a new composition obviously this is what the composition looks like obviously it's very basic uh, so I'm gonna make a new composition 1920 by 1280 let's make it 1280 resolution which I like 30 frames a second is fine for me uh, 10 seconds long should also be uh, so we should do the job so I'm going to go to fit up to 100%, make the preview a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to make a new solid to start with. Uh, Say so make comp size, yeah, just double check that just in case. And I'm going to go to effect generate, and I'm going to make a ramp. Now the ramp obviously can be your choice, you can have a radial lamp or a linear lamp. I'm going to stick with the linear, and I'm going to drag out the white just a little bit towards the bottom, and the black I'm going to turn to a nice... A nice, quite quite a strong blue, but then drag it up a bit, maybe so it's not as harsh, like so. Uh, maybe just a tad lighter. There we go, and I may make the white just have that little bit of a tint to it. So there we go. We've got the backdrop. Uh, for me, that will do. Uh, I probably actually prefer this backdrop, but. Hey ho, we'll get started. So we're going to have the logo, and I just called it Logo Tut. Nice, quick, brief. So we'll whack that in there. It's not actually centered up or anything. I didn't take too much time into that. However, you guys can surely forgive me for that. I should hope so. Obviously, yours will uh, be as you wish. So initially, what I'm going to do is I've got this logo. And I'm just going to make the reveal. Uh, so the way it reveals in my preview. It blurs in uh, via Gaussian blur and opacity fade. So we're just going to go to, I'm uh, going to click T on that layer, which is going to be opacity. And if we go keyframe the opacity at the beginning, and it's going to be zero. And then after one second, I'm going to make it be 100. So there you got a nice one second fade. That's all a bit bland, so we're going to add a Gaussian blur. So we're going to go to effect, blur, sharpen, Gaussian blur. And at the start, I'm going to keyframe it to about 15. Uh, you see what works best for you. And after two seconds, I'm going to make it zero. So there's going to be still a blur while it's completely in opacity. And I feel this adds quite a nice effect to it as opposed to it all coming in at the same time. It's got the kind of feel that it's kind of focusing in. Like it's appeared, but it's still, still getting the focus. So once that's done, we're going to make the reflection so to do this we are just going to duplicate that layer so command D and I clicked the wrong key but it's still managed to duplicate so that's fine 
And I'm just going to reverse it. And set. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, drag down on the top just to reverse it. Drag it down a bit. Hold shift. Keep it in alignment. That would do. And I'm also going to make this layer a 3D layer by ticking the 3D box as you see here. If, if this is not showing, just press uh, F4 and it will change between the tabs for you. So once that's done, you'll see uh, new effects and it's Z rotation, Y rotation and X rotation. Obviously, if you turn it off, they disappear. And what we're going to be working on is going to work on the X rotation. So if we go to when we can actually see it, on the X, I'm going to change it to about minus 60. And that gives a kind of effect that it's kind of uh, got, got a nice shadow going on. I'm going to lower it just a little bit, like so. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the effects on this, though. And under the Gaussian blur, you see that we keyframed it uh, until it's, so it's zero there. So it comes in uh, completely blurred, and it's going to come into 0% uh, blur. But we actually want it to be blurred because it's a shadow. So we're going to make it come into a blur, and I'm just going to change it here and do what we think looks good. In fact, no, second thought, I'm going to scrap the complete uh, idea of a blur because it's a shadow. So uh, I'm going to add it again. I uh, have some reason, I should remember, Control Z. Uh, just delete the keyframes. Apologies. So I'll just delete these keyframes. That's not a problem. But we're going to alternate the blurriness to about, I don't know, keep, we'll keep it at 15. We'll see what that does. Uh, and we're going to change the opacity as well. You notice how we change the opacity? Just click T again. And obviously, this comes into uh, zero, 100% zero, uh, opacity rather, which means it's full opacity, which we don't want that because it's a shadow. So it needs to be nice and faint. So I'll recommend something about 20. So it comes in from nowhere and fades in. And that's looking quite good for the shadow. Uh, one thing I might just crank up the blur to something about, say, 20. Not two, that is shocking. 20, there we go, we've got a nice blur going on. So there we have it, it's nice and revealing. So that, that's pretty much stage one clear. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make uh, the little sub the text that comes down. In my case, it's my YouTube URL. So I'm just going to make a new text layer. <coughs> oh, apologies. A uh, new text layer. Whack it in there. And I'll try and type out my username, uh, YouTube URL, uh, without any errors. My hands are still cold. I've been out for a while, so excuse me if this doesn't flow as well or I make a few mistakes or whatever. Uh, but before we even try and bother lining it up, we need to change the anchor point. So because it's kind of uh, flowing in, we need to change the anchor point. So to do this, let's go to Transform. And the first tab is the anchor point. So you see the thing that is staying in the middle, kind of like a crosshair. You want to line that into the middle of the text horizontally and vertically you want it to be at the top. So literally you want it matching up towards the top dot of that text. As you see, I am just now. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. Yeah, as long as it's towards the top down, pretty much in the center. Obviously you can change it perfectly, should you wish. But now we change that, we can line it up to how we want. Uh, that is looking good. I'll just go to 100% and see how big it is. And that's looking okay. I've got a light grey, and it's pretty much saved as what I did in the preview just a second ago. So it's looking nice and swell there. However, I want it to start about. When should I have it to start? Um, I'm thinking about five seconds in. So yeah, five seconds in. That'll do. I'll look at this panel back to make a bit more space. I'm just going to drag it so it starts at about five seconds, and I'm going to make this layer 3D again, and I'm going to go to the X rotation. Uh, is it X or is it Y? Isn't it? It's got to be. Oh no, it's still X. Still X. There we go. Got to stick with your guns. Anyway, I'm going to make this 90 degrees and keyframe it. And after about a second, uh, just in, uh, over half a second, but just before a second, I'm going to make it zero. So it kind of falls down and reveals. You notice how a bit of delay on it. So to do this, I'll let you do an amateur way. On this keyframe, instead of it being zero, it's going to go past the intended uh, origin point. So it's going to go to minus 20. And then it's going to go to 10. So if you can see what I'm doing here. It's going from 90 uh, past zero uh, to minus 20. So it's going past the original destination point. And then it's going back to 10. 
again past the zero and it's going to go once again finally to minus five before it goes to the final uh, zero where we want it to stay obviously you can arrange the keyframes as you want so it just falls down uh, in fact spread them out just a little bit there we go that'll do that'll do and anyway, so once you've got that sorted you have literally got the whole base of the animation sorted now one thing we're going to do is we're going to click the logo the logo reflection and the url and we're going to go to layer pre-compose so we're going to make we call this uh, title well, at least i am anyway whatever floats your boat and literally the very basic we're just going to keyframe the scale so yeah, keyframe the scale to start with and then go right to the end and just make it a little bit smaller like so so it looks like it's fading away the whole time adds another field uh, kind of aesthetically <coughs> to look at I'm sorry I've got a bad throat huh? we need a drink yeah but anyway you've got that sorted and that is basically the whole animation in itself uh, one thing that you maybe could do is add a new solid and I don't add a lens flare uh, well not lens flare, well, optical flare uh, using video co parts plugin if you don't have these you can use a light or whatever or no light factory or something that you have I'm not going to spend too much time in this in fact I don't even know mm, oh, whatever that one looks alright I suppose and obviously you need to change the mode to screen to enable it to show no, I'll increase the brightness, but I'm going to drag it out up here. So something like that, and obviously you can animate it maybe so it comes down. In fact, I'll do that. I'll go center position. Wait, what one do it? Yeah, center position. So we'll make it up there. Yeah, to start with position X Y. And towards the end, it will just move down, something like that, maybe. Nothing overly advanced. I want to tone it down. Needs a range change to eighty percent, uh, lower everything, make it a bit more subtle, less harsh. Um, but anyway, that is today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. You might not have. If it's a bit beginner, I understand. Hopefully, to work on finishing this animation, I want to have it up by the weekend. Uh, I'm having a few troubles at the moment, but anyway. Thank you for watching this video guys, I hope you learned something, maybe picked up a few tips or tricks here. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for watching this video, leave a comment, favourite, like, whatever you want, I'm not too fussed, in fact I am, yeah, I like it, uh, I'd, I'd be really happy. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go now, I'm going to get a drink, I've got a sore throat, Ugh. winter these days, so we're wearing a coat more often. Uh, but anyway, thank you, <laughs> uh, enjoy the rest of your day, I've been Connor Chrome Designs, and I'll see you guys soon, bye.